This video is designed to show you how to you do parts 2 and 3 of the Dumas tube lab for AP Chemistry. The goal of part 2 is to measure the volume, uh, the, the mass of 50 milliliters of water. So you need to have a device that can very accurately measure 50 milliliters of water. The device you're going to use is called a volumetric flask. Most volumetric flasks look something like this. They have a bulb at the top and a uh, tube-shaped exit port. The, along the uh, tube-shaped portion of the volumetric flask, you'll see a ring-shaped scratch. That's the fill line. That means that when you fill the flask so that the bottom of the meniscus is at the fill line, you have you have exactly the volume that you're supposed to get out of the volumetric flask. So, don't fill the volumetric flask all the way. Just fill it to the fill line, which on this particular one is right about here. The other thing to remember is that you want to measure the mass of 50 milliliters of water, not the mass of 50 milliliters of water plus the glass that makes up the volumetric flask. So we're going to have to subtract out the mass of the volumetric flask. Now in this section of the lab we're going to be using the triple beam balance and the reason we're using that is because we're going to be taking some measurements uh, in, this sec in these two sections, section 2 and 3, that exceed the 200 gram limit of the electronic balance. So, Start off by measuring the mass of the empty volumetric flask. Just put it on there and start with the heaviest slider. Okay, 100 grams is too much, so we'll have to move in smaller increments. That, that's too much. That's still too much. Still too much. Oh, whoops, sorry, I'm going the wrong way. I'm not adding enough mass. There we go. Tip the scales right there. Okay. So back off one from where it tipped the scales and then move down to the next slider. Okay. Alrighty. And that's still a little too much. Okay. You want the little white line here to measure line up with the dot on the uh, triple beam balance, and that will be the mass of the volumetric flask. Add up the mass, uh, the numbers on all three sliders, and you'll get your mass. Okay. When you're done, reset all your sliders. All right, so we got the mass of just the glass part of the volumetric flask. Now we got to put some water in there, and remember, only fill to the fill line. Incidentally, a very common question on AP exams is, you know, what devices are good for measuring, are most accurate for measuring volume? Well, I'll tell you right now, there's three accurate ways to measure volume in a AP chemistry lab. One of them is a volumetric flask like you're using now. The other two are volumetric pipettes and burettes. Notice that missing from that list is a graduated cylinder. So graduated cylinders are not considered to be super accurate. Not nearly as accurate as a burette, a volumetric pipette, or a, or a volumetric flask. So having said that, knowing that this is one of the most accurate volume measuring devices you'll find in a laboratory, fill this up to the fill line. When you hold it, Hold it from the base because if you hold it from the neck, there's a chance that your fingers will obscure the fill line. Okay. Don't worry, this is just tap water, so if you spill some, it's absolute or about as harmless as chemicals can get. Okay. And chances are you'll either overshoot or undershoot a little bit. So that's where this device comes in handy. This is just a disposable plastic pipette. Just reach down in there, pull off the right amount of liquid to get you right at the fill line and it'll help if you're on a rigid level surface when you do that. Okay, let's 
see. And you want to avoid some parallax error here, so get your eyes at the same level as the <coughs> scratch, and there you have it. All right, so we've got 50 milliliters of water on the inside, and that's the mass we want to measure. What you don't want to measure the mass of is all these drops of water that I spilled across the outside of the flask. So just take a towel and dry off the outside of the flask. Okay. And then put it back on the triple beam balance. Let's see, again, as always, start with the heaviest slider. Okay, it's still tipping the scales at the first notch on the heaviest slider, so let's try the medium slider. Okay, tip the scale right there, back off one, and then use the lightest slider till you get it balanced. Okay, there we go. So that's your mass measurement for the volumetric flask with the water in it. Now, that's all of part two. You know the mass of this water, you know that its volume is 50 milliliters, knowing the mass and knowing the volume, you can calculate density quite easily. Part three of the lab involves doing something very similar, except this time you're using your Erlenmeyer flask that you used to call your Dumas tube. First things first, you need to get water into here, so you need to take off that cap you put on in part one. Okay? Aluminum foil you can throw out, try to keep the rubber bands if you can. Empty out any residual unknown. And now we need a mass measurement for the empty Erlenmeyer flask. So put the Erlenmeyer flask on here, reset all your sliders. Again, start with the heaviest slider. Okay, tip the scale there, there. No, uh, not enough mass, not enough, not enough. There we go. Okay. So back off one. Oops, careful not to move the Erlenmeyer flask too much. And keep on moving these sliders. There we go. Okay, so that's a mass of your empty volumetric flask. Take it off. Reset all your sliders. Fill it to the brim with water. You want to get the mass of as much water as this thing can hold. So, fill this thing all the way up with tap water. Okay, so that is about as level a surface across the water as we're going to get. If you put, if you've got a little bit of an upward meniscus, again, suck off a little bit of water with your pipette. If you get water on the outside, dry it off with the towel, and then put it back on the scale. All right, now we're going to get a substantially higher mass. So. See, that's the 200 gram position. That's the 300 gram position. Okay, so tips of scales at 200. Uh, at 300 rather. So let's get back off to 200. Let's see. That's uh, still too much. That's still too much. That's not enough. Okay, so that's the position we want to be at. Mm -hmm. Slider. Okay, there you go. 
Add those masses together, should be over 200. How much over 200? Varies a little bit depending on your Erlenmeyer flask. There you have it. Four mass measurements. Empty volumetric flask, volumetric flask filled to the fill line. Empty Erlenmeyer flask, Erlenmeyer flask filled to the brim. Based on these four measurements, you first calculate the density of water and then figure out the volume of the interior of your Erlenmeyer flask. Now back, way back in part one, that Erlenmeyer flask was full of your unknown vapor. So now you know the volume of your unknown vapor. From your measurements in part one, you'll know the temperature of the unknown vapor. That was, uh, that's the same as the temperature of the water bath the pressure and the uh, based on these three measurements you can calculate the moles of gas that were inside this flask when it was in the hot water bath. The one additional measurement you took during part one was the mass of the vapor once it condensed back down to a liquid. So you can use pressure volume and temperature to calculate the moles of gas. You know the mass of that same quantity of gas. Pretty easy from there to calculate molar mass. And that's what you need to do in your analysis section along with one or two other tasks. Hope this video was helpful as well as the previous few videos and good luck in the lab tomorrow.